you, have you got some clarity on Orazio Fantasia as to how long he'll be on the sidelines? Not so much as how long he'll be on the sidelines, but he, he definitely had, um, definitely has a, a strain of his quad. So, um, yeah, he's got a challenge in front of him now to to do his rehab again. Disappointing from the from a club's perspective, and I imagine that um, we'll certainly have to take a cautious approach to to the way that he does his rehab and the way that he comes back. They're really disappointing for him. Even he had kind of done a mini pre-season before to get back to. The, um, I guess get back to being the start medical sub for the North Melbourne game. Will he have to do another, you know, like kind of mini pre-season once he's fully fit to get different conditions? Yeah, I mean, look, he, he won't have played for a long time um, by the time he comes back from from this injury now. Whether it be, um, yeah, he's obviously had a massively interrupted pre-season, um, hasn't been able to get back on the park. So there's no doubt that we're going to have to put some some load into him before he actually gets back at SNFL or AFL level. Major, minor. What- I oh, look, it's it's more significant than the one he you know recently had. Um, you know, he, he had a setback probably three weeks ago. We we thought he was ready to go. Um, it's slightly worse than that. So I imagine, uh, you know, right now um, we've got a week off this week. You know, he'll be a month away by the time that he is able to play at AFL level again, and that that will probably need to include some game time at SNFL level. How much of a concern is it that he seems to have these, these, yeah, he's still having these issues even though there once he's come to the club from that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's a concern for us because we think that he brings something different to the AFL team than what we actually have in there at the moment. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's important that we give him the opportunity to get back and for us as a team to, to um, you know, get better, we're going to have to have some more output from you know, that particular role into the future. I, I, you know, you talk about... You know, Mott's, um, you know, Robbie, that small forward, they're really important to the way that we play. So, you know, it, it's, it will be advantageous for us to get him back and to get him back quickly, but we're going to have to be cautious now. Yeah, I guess it's a calculated risk whenever you bring the injury prone player to your football club, and there's obviously a fair amount of confidence in, in, in medical stuff here and your track record. Is, it, is there still that faith that there can be a longevity in the ratio that, that he can play a significant role in? For a long of time. Yeah, I mean, we've got to have faith. Um, you know, we saw last year that when he is able to get on the park, he's really dangerous for us, and and so we'll keep searching for answers. You know, we'll we'll leave no stone unturned and t- try and get him the right care to get him back playing. I know that he's got a commitment to, to getting back. You know, obviously the last 36 hours for him haven't been great, but you know I know that he's got a commitment to to start his rehab again, and um, that's all we can do is really provide him with an environment where he can get back to fitness and get back playing. Does this impact your mid-season draft plans if you were, were going yeah, to enter, enter into it? No, not really. I mean, uh, the, the mid-season stuff is, for us, uh, you know, we won't participate in that unless there's a you know, two or three players who get through to our pick. Um, no, the, this you know, Raz's situation right now doesn't impact that, no. Are you seeing a thin field in the mid-season draft or...? Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is it has to be a thin field because most players who have um, talent and who are performing generally are, are picked through the draft, but through the you know the national draft. But, yeah, we'll, as I say, we've got some names that we might look at. If they get through to our pick, whatever it is, um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly participate, but we, we're not going to pick someone right now who's, who's only you know, going to strengthen our SNFL team from a, a now perspective. We need to take a longer term view of if we're bringing someone in they need to be coming in for you know two or three years in the first instance to give them an opportunity to actually play. So is there a, a need in, particularly with the three zones is there one zone that you're really hammering? No I, I know that Jason and Jason Cripps and Jeff Parker have, have got you know players in in each area of the ground um, a lot of it will depend on as I say Rich, um, whether that player um, gets through to our pick you know, clearly there's um, clubs ahead of us will will probably be looking at the same players um, so yeah we're hopeful that someone does fall into our pick but if they don't as I say we won't participate mid-season do you review present a report to the board is how's that work for you in the mid-season? yeah well, I mean we'll we'll certainly use this as an opportunity to put a, a point in time through to you know all our footy committee which will will go through to our board um, you know, it's it's been a tale of two halves of the first half of the the season. Um, you know, our first five games were were disappointing. Um, you know, clearly, 
we're able to, to turn that around, but we also acknowledge we're still not playing as well as we would like. And, um, and I think the break has come at a good time in terms of saying, OK, well, we need to recalibrate where we're at. We're at. Our coaches need to make sure that they're looking at what's going to take us forward um, and be able to win big games of footy. Um, did, did the injuries expose needs to you that you hadn't been aware of? Well, the, well, not really. I mean, when you when you lose your key players, Aaliyah, let's say, and Charlie, let's say those two, and not have Fantasia in the team, but if you just concentrate on Aaliyah and, and Charlie as two two players who have been out for significant times, you, you just you can't replace those players. So, um, you know, you'll see other teams go through that now who who lose key players to to the way that they play. Um, their performance will inevitably be impacted in some capacity. Now, you know, ours was, but we ex we still expected to win the game, some of those games that we lost. Um, and our coaches know that, you know, we, we've, and our players know that, you know, we put ourselves behind the eight ball um, and we've got a real challenge right now to, um, to take the group forward, but also to start playing better footy because, you know, we got through last night through Will and, and um, you know, having a lead early, but we know we didn't play as well as we could. So, in terms of the football program, and in particular then the coach, how do you review the first half of the year of what that's been about, particularly when there's 0-5 start? Yeah. What did that tell you of the program and the coach? Well, look, it, it, it tells us in the first instance. Well, there were games in there that, let's face it, they could have gone either either way. So the challenge, um, if you're talking specifically with our coaching group, I mean, those guys get feedback every week on... Um, the way that they're performing, the way that they perform in the box, the way that the changes that they make in game actually affect the game. So we've we've got a lot of data behind the scenes that actually shows how how well um, you know our players are able to execute the coach's message, um, and that's something that our board get regularly. And it's certainly something that we reflect on regularly because you know what I don't want always is the players. Um, taking the blame for every you know part of a negative performance, we're we're in this together, and so it's as, as critical as any time to um, also critique the work that the coaches and and I do uh, in helping to to put the program together. So, how do you assess the coaching performance at this stage? Oh, look, yeah, you know, they've they've done a very good job in in keeping the group together. Um, yeah, you know, there was obvious opportunity for the group to splinter when we're zero and five and have expectations of playing better than what we did. I mean, you know, you look back at that period of time and say, um, you know, Port Adelaide's performance during that five, first five weeks was significantly away from where everyone expected, including us. So, you know, we, we had to hang in through that period and I think the coaches did a great job in, in making sure that the players still believed in, in what we were doing, which has now you know, put us back to a position where at least we can, you know, have a challenge for the finals, but you know, we, we play some reasonable teams around us in the next three or four weeks. Well, time will tell, um, but I think they've done a, a pretty good job to get us to back to this point. But we wish we weren't in that position in the first five weeks. How much do you look at then? I guess what might have been behind the you know zero and five start in the review that you kind of mentioned before. Yeah, how how thoroughly do you examine the potential reasons behind that? Oh, we, we we examine week by week. Um, yeah, the coaches highlighted some. Um, some defensive actions after the, the Carlton game, which have standard just in good stead for the moment. But um, you know, right now, as I say, we've we've got players who are good players who aren't playing at the level that we want, and um, and who will need to be better if we're actually going to be a legitimate um, contender, you know, towards the back end of the season. Why are they playing? Yeah, do you know why they're not playing at the level that you want them to at the moment? Well, uh, what type of question is that? I mean, this is this is a performance industry where, um, you know, the, the players are well aware of, of what our expectations are. But this is sport, mate. Sometimes people don't perform at the level that they need to. Um, you know, and, and the challenge is for both them individually to work out what it is that makes them a good player and, and concentrate on that and our coaches to facilitate an environment where they do get the opportunity to um, get better in training, but also... You know, training is only good if it transfers into games. We haven't seen some of that um, from a coach to player perspective. Uh, and as I say, we're going to need to see more of it if we're going to be any good towards the, the back end of the season. You talked about the performance of the, the coaching team on five and having to get this. Is that, is that when Ken in particular shows his training? 
Well, Ken's a, a highly experienced coach who knew at that point in time that that was going to be the challenge here, was was not necessarily um, you know, worrying about reviewing 0 and 5 with a, a way forward to, um, to, to look at what our options were at that particular point. It was really important for, for us to, to say the first port of call needs to be that we remain connected as a group and you know, experience it you know, that he's had previously certainly stood at, you know, in, a, in a good position to, to work out that that was going to be our greatest challenge at 0 and 5. And if we could get it, the group staying, that, that the tide would turn. And um, we'd also played some reasonable teams in that first you know, five-week period. I'm, I'm not sure how many people would have expected us to, to beat Melbourne um, in Adelaide, how many people would have expected us to, to beat Brisbane you know, up, in, up in Brisbane. Um, so we had to we had to balance that, and Kim was was really level headed, and um, and we got through. Um, can you understand what, why a, a club who maybe has struggled to have that togetherness or, or build a long term culture or focus would, would try and go after a, a coach like Ken? If he were to come yeah, I mean Ken's Ken's a really good coach. Um, you know, I can understand that uh, any club who is looking for a coach into the future would would be looking at the potential for having an experienced coach compared to a coach who might bring something different and new um, but you know we're really pleased that right now we're in a position where we still can compete for for this season and that's you know our, our total focus forward line mix as i say would you think and where does it lead which george yard is there a world where they can all come on yeah, uh, the the coaches certainly believe there is. Um, you know whether the the whether played an impact on selection last night um, or not. You know we we've got four good, you know tallish forwards um, that we've got to get the most out of. Now that might be that you know only three of them can play, and there's selection pressure. You know each week. You know they they don't need to all play just because you know uh, the coaches. Um, you know, want to give all four a game. We, we have to make sure that we've, you know, we're functioning as a forward line. You know, Charlie came in yesterday, certainly changed the dynamic. Um, you know, I, I think that ultimately, you know, Todd should be able to benefit from having Charlie there, from going from, you know, taking, having to have the, the best defender for the first, you know, eight or nine weeks, whatever it was, to, to now getting the, the second best. I, I think that, you know, you know Todd is, has certainly grown. Um, but we're going to have to continue to look at the mix because, you know, the high forward roles you know, we'd like a little bit more out of, um, uh, and you know, certainly Charlie will be better for the run. You know how important his recovery is as well after games. Is it any word on how he pulled up? Uh, no, he pulled up fine. He was he was really you know, tired after the game. He's he's spoken to, the, to our staff here this morning, and um, yeah, he's okay. But there's no doubt that you know he he needed the run. Any update on Carl's contract situation? No, no. So, um, you know, Carl and, and the club, and we were speaking pre-season, you know, we put things on ice after, you know, he went through that, um, you know, patch of form. Uh, I imagine that we'll re restart, you know, negotiations at some point over the next, you know, um, you know back end of the season. But, um, you know, those things tend to take care of themselves. Do you have any indication on his desire to say? Or... Oh, I, th I think there's no doubt that Carl's invested in this club. You've seen over the last fortnight how much of a, a leader amongst the, the Aboriginal players here at the club he is. Um, you know, we, we're keen to, to keep Carl, but we also know that um, the environment of free agency means that he's got an opportunity to explore those options and you can't begrudge him that either. Was he sore on the final siren last night? Yeah, yeah I, th I think he just copped a corky. Um, yeah, he, he hasn't presented this morning with any, any issues that we would suggest should stop him from playing against Richmond. In ten days. How have you and the coaches viewed the evolution of the midfield group, given that was such a key, this talking point that came out of our season ended last year? Yeah, look, I don't think there's any doubt that Connor has taken some steps forward. Um, yeah, I think think Zach would say that you know he there's still some growth in in what he does, and and that's important. Um, you know, it's it's nice for those guys to have Ollie and and Trav around them to to help them through. Um, you know, Sam Hayes has obviously you know, had a had a good go at it, which cha also changes the dynamic as to you know the, um, the the midfield sort of mix. But you know, we we think they've taken some steps forward. But again, we're going to need more steps forward if we're going to start to play better footy from from all of those guys. Still confident in that growth 
from a mental point of view, the blow come from within, or would there be a need to recruit again? Uh, no, well, are you talking the mid-season or are you talking end of the season? Well, look, the reality of the mid-season draft is there's not too many players who are going to come in and impact straight away. I mean, there'll be one or two, but I imagine that most clubs right now will be taking a longer-term view to the mid-season draft. That, that's, um, that's my perspective on that. Um, yeah, we, we certainly think we've still got some growth. There's, there's guys in the SNFL who we need to be better as well. So if you think of you know, Mead, Bergman... Um, Dersma, you know, we need those guys to be playing better footy in order to uh, to have some selection pressure on on the guys above. And and our reality right now is that's not the case. Um, and we need to you know reflect and say, well, how can we get those guys playing better footy in order to to put pressure on? Because you know, I think our team longer term is going to be better with those names that I just mentioned in it. But right now, the reality is they don't deserve to be playing over for footy. I'm, I'm Josh. Josh, then he's is it a front arm crack uh, pelvis spine? Is that? Uh, he's got um, some like osteitis, what you would have called. He's in there now. Um, we still expect him to to play some footy over the next, you know, the, the back end of the year. Uh, but we're certainly again taking a cautious approach to to um, you know, his training. Yeah, you know, sometimes we forget that those guys who come into the, the programs um, who were drafted, you know, this year. Um, haven't played much footy or haven't had the opportunity to train much. So it's as much about you know, managing his loads and getting him to a point where he can um, train consistently before we, we probably see him. Thank you very much.